Yeah, we'll take those as read. Take those as read. Do we have a move to take those as read? Set the follow-ups. Follow -ups. Follow -ups. Um, just a brief one, Chair. Um, uh, James, on um, number six, the review of the process for LTP. Yes. Are we able to uh, make input into that, or can we, uh, as councillors? Uh, so we will certainly um, be s um, valuing your input when we bring a paper forward. If you are suggesting that um, we could uh, interview uh, councillors, um, then I think that's not a bad idea to get your um, perceptions of the process. Um, to do that efficiently, can I suggest that we ask, I'll ask uh, Desiree to uh, prompt you all by email, and if you could just provide your comments back to us in email, we'll incorporate that into the thinking. Yep, that's cool. Do we have a mover? Uh, Are you going to follow? I'm happy to move, Chair. I'm just going to say, though, I am interested in following up with Barry Lynch. The Source stuff that looks very interesting. But I'm happy to move. Thank you. Seconders? I have a second. Second. All those in favour? Set the follow ups. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Call for my items not on the agenda. Aye. Aye. Um, the T, uh, T Pikunga Atafai. Right, tendered and um, order take consents. Wairau River. About time you started thinking about the Wairau River. Every day, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Any other follow-ups? Uh, Debbie? Just the hotspot funding. Hotspot funding. <laughs> so we have four. No more, we'll move on. So we will take, um, we'll go on to our decision items, recommendation from the Corporate and Services Committee, item six. Now, um, Neil, do you want to do that, or should we give that to Jessica? Uh, well, I, um, well, we've got recommendations on page 12 of the agenda item. We Chair. have. Um, I suppose it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you do it, Jess. I'm struggling here. Sure. That's not unusual. <laughs> So I think the significant item for feedback today is we've brought back the uh, the Treasury policy, which is um, actually within the long-term plan. Um, so happy to take any feedback if anybody had any commentary around the, the revised uh, Treasury policy. So that now incorporates two policies that sit within the Treasury policy, which is the liability management and the investment policy. We've wrapped them up into an umbrella, which we've called our Treasury policy. And we've applied the delegations to both of those policies within the Treasury policy, just to make that a little bit um, cleaner. So we, we are required by the Act to have the two separate policies, but we have encompassed them into what we're calling our Treasury policy. So that's that was included within the LTP. So happy to take any feedback if there was anything there. So are there any questions on that? Um, we'll, we'll go Paul and then to Al. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, page number 29 of our agenda, Jess. Um, there's a bullet point. Uh, this is for on the SIPO? Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, that uh, track record that firms should have at least $500 million under management. Um, is there any particular reason you put $500 million in there? That sort of, to me, that cuts out the opportunity to, to get uh, different sort of fund investors in there who think about things a little bit differently than the big boys? So we, we had specifically tried to be quite um, sort of specific in terms of the requirements because we probably know we're going to be fairly oversubscribed through the tender process, but if you would like us to reduce the, the limit there to allow greater application, I'm happy to consider that. I, I would prefer to see the opportunity for um, smaller. smaller players to be involved. Yeah. Be invited, OK. Is everyone happy with that? To, do you have a suggestion, Paul, in terms of the limit aid? 300, 250, 250, 250 maybe, yeah. would be reasonable. Alan. Mr Chairman, I've got a couple of suggestions which hopefully the Chairman um, of the committee might find um, appropriate. Um, on recommendation three, Finance, Audit and Risk Committee, in relation to um, the living wage, I believe we should insert uh, when it says um, such as environmentally friendly business practices and overall 
affordability, and I'm suggesting add and effectiveness in tender evaluation proce processes. That would be to ensure that, in fact, um, that we didn't give a contract to someone who met all those other factors, but who was a complete dummy and couldn't do the job. Okay. So I suggest add add we'll be the and first. effectiveness. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, I raised this at the time. Um, we debated it before. I believe there should be a 15 on draft statement of investment policy ob objectives and treasury policies, and that is agrees to initiate a future de future debate to clearly define ethical or non-ethical investment categories. Now, my reason for that is, um, well, I alluded to it at the, at, the, at the earlier debate, but on page 24, ethical investments are considered, uh, or are ex what are excluded are uh, industries involving alcohol, tobacco, fossil fuels, and military weapons. Now, I've not, no argument with most of those, but for goodness sake. Um, wine. Yeah. Hawke's Bay is wine country. Mm. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, if, if we could have a decent crack at that sometime in the I future. I think it's a very good idea. Well, we can either do that or we could just amend the cycle right now and drop alcohol. Well, well, save ourselves a future. Simplest, yeah. easiest way, but it, it <laughs> doesn't necessarily. <clears throat> it's not giving it due deliberation, in my view. You got a comment oh, on that? Well, I, I certainly agree with uh, yeah, Councillor Dick on that one because I've got um, other suggestions of my own in there. So I think it needs its own. But that doesn't stop us adopting and then revisiting this soon thereafter, does it, in terms of that ethical investment? Yeah, but we're publicly adopting um, no investment into alcohol in a, a place where we have a huge wine industry. So I don't think that's... Well, thanks for picking that up, Alan. Well, we can drop it out now if we... If we, we could drop it now if we wanted to, but um, that doesn't give us There's, a debate. Yeah, the, um, we can come back to it later. Well, I... Yeah. I've, I mean, we well, can I, drop it out. I'd prefer, it. if, it's, if you would, wouldn't mind, Mr Chairman, to put that extra in, agrees to initiate a future debate to clearly define ethical or non-ethical investment categories. What sort of time frame? Councillor, are you seeking? Oh, two or three months, whatever. Bring a paper back to I mean, the finance audit. Know, what about prostitution? It's legal. So it's alcohol. alcohol. But we um, don't necessarily want to... It should be an interesting discussion. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I think it's actually a really would be a good discussion. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, let's go for it. We have a discussion on it. Okay, sure. but we'll bring, bring a paper back, 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 back to the finance audit and risk. Otherwise, you're happy to leave it as is with the sidebar? Yeah, in the meantime. Right. With the caveat, though. Yep. We are able to update our financial policies. Anything. Correct. OK. Right, yeah, I agree then, Leave it. It's a bit strange. <coughs> oh, Neil, you have some... Uh, yes, uh, if, I, if I could just, uh, trouble you a little bit uh, in terms of the, the SIPO sure. and taking to page 21, um, the very top of that page, it's either page 5 or page 21, take your pick. Duties and Responsibilities, Council Corporate Strategic Committee. Uh, Council Corporate Strategic Committee will be responsible uh, for the following, um, uh, and I'm just wondering whether we should be responsible, the Corporate and Strategic Committee will be responsible for recommending the following to Council. The Corporate and Strategic Committee can't be res responsible in its own right. Um, under financial, and in the middle of the page, Finance, Audit and Risk Committee, the responsibility of the implementation of the Council's investments policy, I don't believe the Finance and Risk Committee is responsible for the implementation. I think it's responsible for monitoring and reviewing the implementation. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there's a typo in the third um, dot Does point down, investment council. manger. The manger. <laughs> Uh, just over the next page, on page 22, um, it's got there uh, that the Finance Audit and Risk Committee um, top dot point approves rebalancing the fund. I don't think it does at all. Uh, I think it recommends to Council any rebalancing required <coughs> to maintain the fund within the, um, the asset allocation range. I'm suggesting we, we change that to recommend to council. 
any rebalancing required to maintain the fund within the asset allocation range. Does that make sense? Yes, got that, thank you. <coughs> um, and further down, um, uh, an external investment manager may be appointed to manage part or all of the fund, and I'm suggesting at the direction of the um, Chief Executive or Chief Financial Officer. At the moment, this um, CFO doesn't actually identify where the investment manager reports to. <coughs> struck me a couple of times on that. Um, and on page 23, um, under, under the heading Fund Manager, it says to manage an allocated part of the fund on terms and conditions consistent with their mandate. Um, but we don't know what their mandate is, really, and I'm suggesting um, to manage an allocated part of the fund on terms and conditions uh, as approved by the GM, uh, GM Corporate Services under delegated authority of the Council. Yep. And just a little further on, I was, I was going to pick up on the ethical uh, investment and um, add to it um, ethical banking practices, but that's something we can debate in that session that Councillor Dix uh, considered. Yep. Under rebalancing, second paragraph down, uh, if any asset class allocation exceeds the ranges set above, then sufficient assets will be transferred on Council's authority uh, to bring the weights to benchmark. Now, actually, we want to do more than bring to benchmark. We want to bring them within the asset allocation range. Mm -hmm. And that's it from me, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, but there is something under, and this is a question uh, in the um, long-term plan, um, under delegations, uh, should in fact we put um, a delegation to the investment manager is that is Which that page you on now? Sorry, um, this is in the in the um, long term plan itself. Yeah. Um, should should we be saying giving a delegation to the investment manager is that needed? Or the is financial it, strategy? Could you just refer uh, to me? Under the you under the um, page two eighteen page page two eighteen of the long term plan is a table with the respective delegations. My question is. Um, should the investment manager be delegated or a reference made to who holds the delegation instructing the investment manager? What I'm saying is there doesn't appear to be line of sight between the investment manager and... The investment manager shouldn't be making any decisions which haven't been mandated by council. either council or the group manager of course. So services. it doesn't need a de delegation I per se? I so. OK, thank you. Just, uh, and then Debbie. just one minor thing on page 25, investment manager risk. Um, the headline is the investment manager's returns may vary. That's the council's returns, not the investment manager's. Correct. <coughs> yeah. Debbie. Thank you. Um, number 10, I'm quite perturbed by the disappointment of Councillor Wilson on the Hawke's Bay Tourism Board of Directors and, and during the CNS meeting the question was put to Councillor Balford about why he was wanting to um, replace Councillor Wilson and um, he declined to comment so I'm wondering if you might reconsider that and perhaps give us a bit of a feel for for um, where, you, where you might be going with this Councillor Balford before we vote on it. It's out of order. Yeah. The council's happy. It's, it's out of order, Mr. Chair. Yeah, no, but I think we'll let it go. It's not. It's a little bit strange, but Tom, you got two minutes, mate. I need one minute. Um, uh, we've we've signalled an important change in our philosophy toward uh, funding that uh, enterprise. I've been outspoken about that, uh, but I think fairly so. I think the the, the council. Um, wants to have a different um, set of eyes on the activities of, of the tourism operation to see, uh, in fact, uh, that due diligence is applied in 
pursuing some of the uh, additional concerns we had about funding sources, about Maori tourism, uh, various things that we have raised in the in the public debate about this, and uh, uh, and so in part it's just a a fresh eyes, perhaps one might call it tough love uh, situation uh, where uh, you know I might be more. Uh, questioning of uh, what some of the current practices are and, and how things are being done. I have a, a professional marketing background, uh, and so uh, I think I'm pretty astute as to how these things work and what the options might be to, to do the job more effectively. So uh, I am not uh, anti-Hawks Bay tourism. I've been uh, welcomed provisionally uh, by the leadership of Hawks Bay tourism to the fold. and. Uh, I intend to pursue this in a very constructive manner. Thank you, Tom. Uh, are there any more questions related to this paper? Otherwise, uh, do we have a, a mover? Uh, but with, and with the changes which uh, Councillor Curtin has put in. Yeah, just one further question, Jim. Yep, certainly. Um, recommendation number five um, uses the port of Napier valuation provided by Hbrook for the basis of the valuation of Hbrook. Is that, that's not the Flagstaff thing, is it? That's not bringing the Flagstaff valuation into it. So Hbrook have decided to use Hbrook, um, Flagstaff's materials for the evaluation of the port, but we had indicated that we would provide a full valuation in the 1920 financial year. We will still need to have our own yep. valuation of Hbrook take place. OK, all good. Do we have a mover? Happy to move this year. Neil, and we have a seconder and Peter. Neil, do you have to speak? Peter? Anyone else? Benton. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a bit about the Hawke's Bay tourism stuff. Um, as uh, my understanding at the meeting, there was a letter of resignation read out from me. Just happy to elaborate a bit on that. Um, I was the champion of the 1.8 million. I still uh, believe we have very good value for money out of that. Um, <coughs> just need to make sure Councillor Belford understands that it is a governance role, not a managing director's role. Um, and I've been challenging them every meeting about funding. It is not easy. <coughs> so I wish uh, Councillor Belford well. I will support his, um, his appointment. I do also add, though, that in the, in the spirit of cost-cutting, I was also vacuuming the floors uh, of the office. Um, happy to pass, tell him which cupboard the vacuum cleaner's in uh, when he starts. Um, and uh, I wish him well in, in the appointment. Thank you very much. So, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Thanks. It's carried. Um, uh, before we go on, uh, Fenton, I just want to thank you for the service you gave to Hawke's Bay Tourism. Um, you did um, the job you were asked to do, and it was difficult times, and you did it in difficult times, um, and um, you understood the, um, the issues going forward really, really well, and, and, and that's greatly appreciated by me personally, and um, I'm sure by the council. So thanks very much for the job you did. Okay, now, um, before we release <coughs> the two councillors, we're going to go to item seven, which is the adoption of our long-term plan. It's really uh, clearly and concisely set out here. We have, we have one little change which uh, Neil's put in. Um, I'm not sure how much, how, many, how much debate and how many questions we, r we need on this, but are there any questions to the... Sorry, Chair, just before we do, just draw to your attention that we did uh, receive yesterday uh, the... Uh, an opinion of uh, Audit New Zealand uh, on the uh, the long-term plan. So obviously uh, there's a massive job for the Office of the Auditor General to uh, uh, consider uh, all of the long-term plans of all councils in New Zealand simultaneously, uh, and so they've been under a considerable pressure and uh, hence uh, us receiving this uh, late. Um, but um, uh, overall, um, I think the uh, the conclusion is that uh, uh, from the Auditor General is that a clean bill of health in terms of the uh, the long term plan that is for you for adoption today. Do we have any questions related to long term plan? Alan? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, first one is we've got on the agenda item um, outcome measures, which are <coughs> all very good. Uh, time bound and so on. However, in reading the long term plan, I can't see those those measures in there. 
Yeah, they are. Indeed. They are. Um, I don't know where the Desiree can point. Qu 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 page uh, 14. 13. 14. Page 14. Page what? Page 14. One four. Yeah. Of the plan. Of the long term. Yes, they are. Yes. Sorry, bear with me if you don't mind. <coughs> oh, yes. No, you're absolutely right. Um, all right. Well, further to that. Um, there is no um, outcome or output measure for transport, which is one of our largest um, and most important activities. Uh, so you, um, they, they are actually part of the group of activities, output measures, or so if you go to page... So we've got activity measures. Service measures. Yes, we do have service measures. We don't have uh, outcome measures for transport other than Why not? Uh, carbon neutrality uh, and uh, and obviously the the, um, oh. uh, the one in relation to Napier Port. You will note the addition of a new wharf with supporting land transport infrastructure, uh, which was a, was was a uh, catch-all both for rail uh, and port access. Yeah. Uh, more broadly uh, across the region, uh, you're quite correct that we do not have an overarching uh, outcome measure for transport more generally. Um, but I can't see why not. Uh, well, look, these were these were translated <coughs> from the uh, strategic plan that was adopted by council last year, uh, and at that point in time, uh, the uh, these were the ones that were added in in relation to uh, the concern that you raised, councillor, at that point in time, uh, and there just hasn't been uh, any, any uh, one further added. I, th I think it's an omission, but if that's the way it's going to be. Well, look, Council, it's very late in the process, obviously, for adding one in, um, but if uh, you were able to articulate one uh, right now and it was adopted uh, by Council, uh, it, it, it could, I guess, be added in. Um, it will be a, a deviation from the long-term plan, which has been uh, audited by the Office of the Auditor General, but uh, I would anticipate that this is not a significant matter that would cause them any concern. <coughs> well, of course, there's not one for civil defence either, is there? Uh, not in terms of a, a community uh, outcome measure. Uh, there are around uh, flood risk. Yeah. Would this require a reordering, James, if we make the changes now, these changes? Um, not a full reorder, but it would need to be passed by order. We'd, we'd, we'd need to let the Officer or Auditor General know that there were um, some changes made. All right, well, I'll leave you with, with you. If it's too hard, it's too hard. I think it's a bit, of a, shame, a bit of a shame to be selective about the activities that you... It, in a sense, it's saying, well, these things are important, but the others are not that important. Councillor, so the point is taken. Um, these um, were presented to Council at multiple iterations through workshops since the beginning of this year, these outcome measures. They were we had a dedicated workshop on, on the outcome measures. They were considered as part of the process. We are right at one minute to midnight in terms of the process, so... Look, uh, our, um, workshops are workshops. You know my feeling about them. Now, my other concern, uh, and this is an even more significant one, is, as you've said, in ten this year, for the first time, the document has bilingual headings, English and Terraria. Um Now, I'm, I'm sorry, but I believe that format has made this document very difficult to read. One thing, the, the heading in Terreo will not be understood by 95% of the population. And even more importantly, what's been lost is um, Just the, heading, the principal title of the, of the activity, which I argued for two years should be in there. Um, for instance, okay, this is annual report 1617. Um, regulation group of activities. Building act implementation. And on the next page, 
regulation group of activities. So I would like to suggest, and I can't see that this is material change that the auditor would need to be concerned about, that you take out those very large prominent Rio titles, put them back in as a byline should you wish, but put in place the, uh, the name of the um, activity or group of activity boldly so that then, you know, as a working document, you can actually go to it and find what you want. It's very hard at the moment. Do you accept that? Uh, yes, uh, that's probably something we can do with relative ease. Yep. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I don't know what other councillors think, but it, it, it actually, if you want to go and find, well, okay, I, I'm interested in transport. If I want to go and find transport, I've got a, a difficult job to find it. And the, and the, the Torreo head, headings do nothing. Um, I would go to the table of contents and see yeah. the transport is on page 119. Sure. Yeah. But I, I mean, what what actually are those Toreo headings doing other than making the document look um, politically? <laughs> Appropriate. Um, Alan, so is your issue finding it, and as you can say, or is your issue that... Um, it's both. Oh, it's both. But finding it... I is think a heading should be a heading, and, and the heading should be something that people understand. Chair, Chair, I'm sorry, I find that offensive. I find that extremely oh, offensive. On. That one of our councillors sitting around this table here point of order, is, is willing to degenerate yeah. T. Rayo simply for the sake of it. That's appalling. Point of order, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, no, accepted. Look, um, and, well, let's and not. If you read standing orders, you'll know it's not appropriate to, to abuse fellow members or members of the public, which he's prone to do. Alan's making a point um, that um, I don't personally agree with, and clearly um, Councillor Bailey doesn't personally agree with. I, I think it is relatively easy. I think um, Tom's pointed out, you just, if, if you want to find something, Alan, you go to the table of contents and there it is, there's the page number. So I don't think um, that's too big an issue. Um, whether we have Torero on it, um, I think, um, from my perspective, um, I'm not good at languages, but um, we are trying to promote our indigenous language, and I think it's a really good thing that we have that um, there. Uh, it's actually quite a small, and this whole thing, which is all in English. Um, Mr. Chairman, I was not, I was not um, advocating that it's removed. I was simply advocating that the principal heading be there in bold, that the Toreo heading be there as well, but as a byline. Yeah, and no, I understood that. So, are the the councillors support uh, Alan's position or not? No, no, two of us no, don't. No, I don't. I don't. No. Just in, in going through this, I I didn't, I wasn't confronted with it quite the same way that Councillor no. Dick may have been. Um, I do have some sympathy for the. But it, it, I found it quite easy to work my way through it, to be fair. Yeah, uh, Alan, I don't think you have a lot of support around the table for, for a change. So be it. Are there any other questions? Sorry, Chair, can I just clarify? Um, so I think there's a clear view around the <coughs> inclusion of Te Reo. Um, with respect to uh, having the specific group of activities uh, uh, within the title of each page, is that something that councillors want, or are you happy to rely on the contents page? For navigation of the document. The contents page it. is very clear. Yeah. It's no problem. I've we'll always leave. had it in addition to a contents page. <coughs> yeah, he's correct in that in that matter. Absolutely. Uh, look, we'll take that one away, uh, Chair. And um, I, I, it doesn't. I just don't want to go into any more expense in regarding this as just a document. Now it's taking us a long time to get here, um, and we're worrying about the politics around the document. And um, we should be um, concerning ourselves with the content of the document, which um, is outstanding. So I just don't want to spend any more money, I mean, ratepayers' money, on making little changes because you've got a big printing exercise. And, 
haven't printed yet. You have the fairy design. Bible that is readable. Okay, uh, Tom. Just a, when, on the outcome measures, back to Neil's point, in, in the uh, adoption, I guess, recommendations, number 15 refers to output measures have been reduced from 145 to 60. Where, where, and, but 23 are, rep, are put in the, where, where can one find the other 37? So these are the outcome measures as opposed to the output measures. The output measures are what sit uh, in the, uh, uh, in the group of activities. So those are those measures there. That's where the rationalisations occur. Okay. Do we have anything else substantive uh, questions here, or can we have a mover to accept the long-term plan? I think suggest you move it, Mr Chair. Yeah, OK. I'm very happy to move the long-term plan. Thank you, uh, Neil. I am very happy to move the long-term plan. Have a second. And we have a seconder in Councillor Curtin. Do I wish to speak? Yes, I do. This has been a huge exercise uh, for this council and for all of you around the table here. And for our community, we had uh, two and a half days of submissions and um, we changed quite a few things as a result of those submissions. And it was really uh, telling uh, to me personally, and I'm sure to you, um, how much interest came out of our community within those submissions. And not only the interest, but the intellect and the and the really in-depth thinking on a lot of uh, things are around uh, the proposals which we were putting forward. Um, it is a rather it is a revolutionary long-term plan. Uh, we are saying we are doing some very very serious uh, stuff here. We are using ratepayers' money to um, correct. Uh, things which have happened in our environment over the last hundred years and we'll start the process or create a platform uh, to um, start a new era in the way that we manage our environment. And I am personally, and you should be also, really proud that we have got to this point of time. We are going to invest uh, serious capital in this. Uh, we're going to, uh, serious energy is going to this. and. What is really impressive is that we have the community with us. Um, as I tour around um, the uh, Rohi uh, of, the, of our, of our uh, mandate, I get um, nothing but support. There's a few niggles here and there, but um, principally we get a huge amount of support uh, for this long-term plan and the objectives of this council. So I just want to say congratulations to everybody. Um, it's, it, is going to, it, it is the beginning of a new era for us. Neil. Look, uh, thank you, Mr Chair. I can only echo your words uh, around this plan. Uh, I think this plan is, uh, uh, invites celebration from the council. Um, I've had nothing but very positive feedback from a number of sources around it. I note the um, commentary from a number of staff who simply stop you in mid-track anywhere in the building who are enthusiastic about the plan. Um, I want to thank those that have compiled it. It is a comprehensive, well-structured document. Um, Desiree, for her work on this, has been outstanding. Uh, James's attention to detail uh, around it has, has deserves high commendation as well. I don't think we've had such a high focus about such an important document, certainly in my time on council, so I congratulate him for that. Uh, Jess, similarly around the financial policies, what we've got is um, a framework for implementation uh, in terms of the environment, which is well constructed, well thought out, and now well articulated in the document. But similarly, along the way to the challenges we've got with the environment are some substantial financial challenges and financial management challenges given what's in front of us uh, over the next decade. And I think with that documentation we can um, know that at least we've got a strong framework. Implementation will be another thing, but we've got a really strong start on it. I finally, Mr Chair, would comment uh, on those outcome measures. Delighted to see them in place. 
Um, I'm even more delighted to reduce them down in number um, as we go forward, to review them as we go, and but particularly to find, for them to be found and to find their way into our foundation re regional resource management planning documentation, and then they become the benchmarks, the measures, the yardsticks, the milestones that we measure our performance, so that in 10 years' time, uh, someone uh, reviewing our performance is able to say, did we make it or we didn't? Uh, we've spent nearly three decades not knowing whether we've made it or not. Now at least we have that opportunity. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Fendon, then Paul. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, the, the argument over whether this um, should have been adopted or not occurred at the hearing, actually, so I concede that. Uh, I'm still concerned about um, financial burden on, on parts of our community, and I'll elaborate on that. So while we sold this as a dollar a week, actually it's a bloody sight more than that. Um, I've got a, a guy, ex um, single income superannuitant living in a house in Warrow. I asked him to do, he, he comes from a, a, an accounting background. He, he is currently paying $96 a fortnight in rates across both councils. He said, "Will be with our contribution." He sees he'll be over a hundred um, coming up, and we don't know what the district council is going to do. So all I'm saying is, while all the stuff is is good and a change of direction, and everyone's um, pretty excited about it, including our staff, which is great, and uh, the the decisions have been made. So I'm going to support this because, obviously, if we don't support it today, the whole place grinds to a halt on the 1st of July. So the arguments happened previous month, not this month. So I'm happy to support this on the basis that we still need to go and do our work. But I just want councillors to sit back and reflect on we are making an imposition on uh, parts of our community that are going to struggle. Um, and, you know, that, that's not to be taken lightly. The, the last point I'll make a challenge to the Chief Executive, I think you're going to struggle to spend all this. And I've always been um, one who uh, I'd rather overspend than overrate. I think overrating, putting money in reserves for the fact that you can't spend it is abhorrent. And I will be watching with great interest next financial year. Be warned. Thank you, Ben. We appreciate you watching us. <laughs> and there was someone else, it was Paul and then Alan. Yeah, I'd um, just like to say, Chair, that it's been <coughs> fascinating being part of this um, process right from the get-go, um, from when we first had that, had that uh, hui um, as councillors to set a strategic <coughs> direction and vision, and to see that being um, translated by staff into, into work actions and, in, and through the long-term plan has been um, a, a thoroughly a challenging process um, in terms of its, uh, intel its intellectual um, the intellectual challenge that's involved in getting your head around all that sort of stuff, I found that really enjoyable. Um, and I really appreciate the efforts that have been put in by all the staff to, uh, put, to put this particular plan together. Um, I'm also really pleased that it actually signifies a step change in, in, in what the Regional Council is actually going to be doing. I think the public get that we're actually returning to our core functions, um, which is uh, the, the maintaining or enhancing the environment, which I'm really, really pleased to see. Um, I totally get, also get uh, Councillor Wilson's point about affordability um, and very conscious that uh, any imposition we make on, on the rate payers is going to be challenging for some um, and that's why I'm pleased, well, I was pleased to hear that we do actually have a facility in place so where we can do payments over time for those who are on lower incomes to help them with their budgeting exercises. Um, and uh, that was about all I'd have to uh, say. Thank you. Alan, we'll go, um, Alan, Paul, we'll go to Alan then, but do you mind? Yeah, Mr. Mr Chairman, as, as you know, I've had some reservations about this plan and have spoken against certain elements. Um, but um, a form of dem democratic process has been uh, followed through and concluded, so I will not be voting against this plan and I will support it uh, and support staff in the implementation of it, uh, certainly up till the um, annual plan next year. Thank you. Well, Mike. 
Yeah, um, yeah just to um, ag agree that uh, wonderful job that the staff and indeed the, uh, the councillors have had in putting this long-term plan. Um, the last long-term plan, um, it was criticised by Māori is that you've got to go to um, three quarters of the way through it before you actually even mention any Māori activity. Um, and this is almost the opposite. It's just that by having a document like this with prominent Māori headings, it just makes the Māori committee, the regional planning committee, Māori members feel part of it. And, um, you know, compared to um, 25 years ago, um, uh, things have certainly got browner, as, as it were. Um, but um, just in terms of the um, uh, the foreword uh, on the on the uh, I was asked and Toro was asked um, and we uh, both voiced um, dictated to Drew uh, as to our comments. Now there's a huge gap, a, a gulf in between what Toro's idea was and what mine was, and um, so I've been along uh, many years in the um, so-called. Um, uh, anti-movement, uh, pro pro Māori movement, and I think that where we are today is just so so much further. Um, and I I think um, I was disappointed in in um, Toro's comments that um, this was just all wrong. Um, this is a great thing for Māori them. It's enabled them to be part of it. Um, what they have to remember when they're jumping up and down is that this comes with an expense to Māori people and a lot of them are um, comparatively low, lowly paid, but they have to pay the way, and the more they want, the more it's going to cost them in reality. So uh, well done, everybody. Tom. Yeah, uh, I would like to make two comments, really. One about the outcome measures, um, most of which are represented as long-term as they need to be, 2030, 2050, 2025, 2040, et cetera. But I think the, uh, to me, the makes, what this makes critical for us is that the uh, wisdom of this plan and, and our uh, competence to implement it will be uh, judged in three years, really, when, when it's time to redo it all over again. Uh, and, and what have we accomplished in the three years uh, uh, of this plan will be critical. And so while it's understandable why we would say by, let's say, 2030, all commercial farms, et cetera, will, will uh, be under a farm environmental management plan or an audited industry best practice, there'll be folks uh, uh, including Fenton here, who will be, who will be saying, uh, assuming you're here in three years, uh, <laughs> what, what progress can you demonstrate uh, in, in that first window? Uh, so this really has to get bedded in, and we have to see implementation plans quickly uh, so, that, uh, so that there is, it is clearly evident that uh, we're not just coasting along, well, it's a 2050 or it's a 2030 or, or whatever. Uh, uh, so I, for one, would like to see the outcome measures articulated in a, uh, in a more specific way, even over the three-year period, uh, so that we uh, know that we are actually getting out of the blocks here. Um, secondly, um, I would commend the staff for, for doing uh, just a terrific job of, of where you consider where we started a year ago, basically, with this process. Uh, like Councillor Dick, uh, I'm not, I, I, it bothers me that so much of the development of this occurs in workshops. Uh, I don't really understand why that needs to be the case, other than some of us feeling embarrassed that we don't know certain things or might ask a dumb question or. Uh, or whatever, but uh, I just don't see, uh, looking back on it, uh, I counted up at one point, I think we had 10 workshops, that maybe I missed a few even, uh, to, to develop this plan, and I just don't see why that uh, needs to be the case. Uh, uh, and uh, so 
while we have a, a great deal of public support for this, I think my, my own sense of it is overwhelming public support, it still bothers me that, uh, uh, that it, it seems to be <coughs> such a behind the scenes, under the radar uh, kind of process as, as we pursue it. The last thing I would say is in, in the five meetings that I went to, uh, the public forums that we had, uh, uh, which James presented at all of these. Uh, 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 James is a terrific ambassador for this council, and uh, there wasn't a single one of those meetings where people didn't come up uh, to me and say, wow, you know, this is what a breath of fresh air this is, uh, referring to James, uh, and uh, his ability to articulate uh, a big picture and the detail uh, in a very compelling way. And so the messenger is important in these things. Uh, and I just want to say I think we have an excellent <coughs> messenger. Thank you, Tom. Any other comments? Uh, well, I'll make the final wrap up. <coughs> I'm really interested in um, councillors wanting KPIs. Well, um, let me assure you that our staff are out of the blocks, Tom, to quote <coughs> you. Um, if you just have to drive up the Wairua Road and take a good look at uh, what's happened at Lake Tutera, um, it's quite phenomenal. Um, we, uh, our intention this year is to plant 280,000 uh, trees. Um, many of you will know, or some of you will know at least, uh, that we have already, um, over the last few five weekends, planted 20,000 plants. <laughs> Um, in different parts of um, of the entire of uh, of our region, um, another five thousand plants are going into Waitangi uh, this weekend. Look forward to seeing you all there. Um, so we are certainly out of the blocks here. Uh, we are at um, a couple of the um, um, planting sessions that I've been to. Uh, landowners on the neighbouring properties have come over and given me their cards and said, how do we get involved? We've got land on the side of the of the rivers and street, creeks and streams and we want to plant them up as well. So this is a community <coughs> right through from Waipaka around to Wairua and go to Wairua and been to several meetings there in the last uh, few months and they are activated. They want to get involved at all levels. People are getting involved and um, you don't think we'll be able to spend the capital we've allocated? Well, I got a funny feeling we will. Um, I've got a funny feeling that um, we have uh, a tiger by the tail here and um, the community want to get these jobs done and we're going to be there to um, help them achieve that, um, that purpose. So, all those in favour of accepting the long-term plan? Aye. 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 Against? Carried unanimously. Thank you very much, councillors. And we will release the two councillors to go to tank now. Thank you, Jim. Get tanked up. Where is it? We'll go to um, Regional Transport Committee, Alan, item 8. We want to talk to that. Chair, uh, well, this um, item is obviously to um, uh, um, consider all the um, reports received from the Regional Transport Committee, but mainly um, to adopt the Regional Land Transport Plan. Um, this is a process that we are required to undertake every six years, and this is a mid-term review. So uh, our last plan was um, adopted in April 2015, and of course this year um, you will have all seen in the news that there has been um, quite a delay in the whole process because of the government policy statement um, being released rather later than it should have been, well, would have been in a normal um, circumstance. And that's to do, of course, with the change of government and a quite considerable change in um, policy for transport. So the Regional Transport Committee has um, taken into consideration the changes that have been made by the government policy statement. 
um, a number of um, variations were made to the plan in terms of projects that have been increased in scope, and those are largely safety projects on state highways. Uh, and we have made some wording changes to try and better reflect the region's desire to be innovative in terms of um, those government <coughs> objectives. We haven't, at the short notice that we were given in terms of the, the release of the draft policy statement, we haven't been able to, uh, in most cases, with the local councils, make significant project changes. Um, but I think the key thing to remember is that this is a snapshot in time and we do make variations to the plan quite frequently. Um, they, they require coming back through the Regional Transport Committee and through the Regional Council. But I can think of at least three or four significant projects that were added to the plan um, in the last three years uh, through that variation process. So I guess um, if, the, if there's an ability for councils to um, pick up further local roading safety projects or, in our case, um, increase in public transport spend through some additional funding that comes as a result of this government policy change, then that, that process can, um, can follow through with a variation <coughs> to the plan. So um, the plan is attached. Uh, it is largely the same direction as, as the 2015 uh, document. But as I say, we have made those wording changes and some project additions to reflect the government policy statement as we are required to do. But I'll take any, cha any questions. Do you have any comments, Alan, or before we take questions? Um, well, Mr Chairman, <coughs> it's... You've referred to a step change in terms of the long-term plan, which I agree with. Um, but there's also an imminent, imminent step change, um, which is signalled in the regional transport plan, uh, resulting from the uh, government's uh, transport policies, which I don't agree with everything this government has done, but uh, in regard to transport, I believe their approach is transformational. Now, we're not able to immediately seize hold of um, and implement some of these new priorities because they all require, or virtually all of them require local funding and um, the, the TAs and ourselves <coughs> are, of course, um, caught by the, the time constraints of, of long-term plan. Um, but <coughs> we will certainly be picking up on the opportunities for increasing um, uh, local share, local roading, um, walking and cycling, and public transport over the the next year or two, as uh, as those opportunities occur, and when we know the level of funding that the government is going to going to offer. <coughs> We did make one major change in priority in the deliberations of the Regional Transport Committee, and that was to lift the priority for the strengthening of uh, Hastings District Council bridges to allow, uh, allow for uh, high-performance motor vehicles for that network to be expanded. Um, but apart from that, um, uh, uh, Liz and Anne, and Anne has done most of the, the donkey work, has done a, a brilliant <coughs> job in this. And in fact, if you actually read the introductory pages, if you want to know what Hawke's Bay is about, read the introductory pages. And that tells you everything, just about everything, as to what yeah. Hawke's Bay is about and does it in a most readable manner. So I think it's a good plan. And, um, I'm sure there may be some questions, but I would like the privilege of moving Well, just hold on, because there could be questions for either you or Anne. Any questions? Yes. Two here. Uh, three. Oh, my. Yes. They're on to you. <laughs> Neil, Mike, Fenton. Uh, hello, Anne. <laughs> um, can I just take you to page 22 of the plan? Um, and that's the um, area to do with safer roads particular personal, personal risk to road users by district. You'll see there that table, and well done for including that um, section in there. Um, I just, there are two questions I've got. Um, one is in relation to 
rural intersections, um, which indicate that Napier City Council um, and Central Hawke's Bay are district uh, uh, local authority areas where those intersections are, uh, are problematic. Mm -hmm. um, can you outline what um, the Transport Committee is intending to do about that issue? Uh, and then the second issue is uh, speed limits on some of our roads and the ability of local authorities to uh, reduce or amend speed limits um, to improve, incre increase safe safety. And the corollary of that is the state highway network, also the ability within urban settings to reduce or, or moderate speed limits. Thank you. Um, thanks, Councillor. I'll ask, answer to a second one first, if that's OK. Um, the, there are quite significant changes underway to speed limit setting processes, and um, we will have seen that reflected in um, Hastings District Council's recent consultation on uh, reducing or changing speed limits for a number of their roads. Um, the Regional Transport Committee submitted on one which we considered had strategic significance, and that was um, Farndon Road. The others were mainly local roads with probably a, re a, a local influence, and um, so we restricted ourselves to those with strategic. So just to come back to the, that um, original idea, there, are, there is a change <coughs> afoot in terms of the speed limit setting um, abilities, and I think that will be reflected in state highways as well, um, but certainly we are seeing it picked up in, in local roading. Um, the, in terms of um, <coughs> on rural intersections, the district councils have the, uh, the principal responsibility, if they're the road controlling authorities, um, to target particular intersections that they know there are, are, have a high crash risk. And I think this is one of the things that the increase focused on road safety in the government policy statement, we are going to see um, increased funding for local road um, safety improvements. And where obviously you have particular intersections, then um, councils would be able to apply for funding for those. The limiting factor is always the local share. And I think um, it's fair to say that NZTA and the government are working closely at the moment to determine how they can increase uh, the financial assistance rate for certain intersections. What they don't want to do is just inject more money and enable um, the councils to do the same program more cheaply. What they want is to see a step change up in, in terms of um, those road safety improvements. So that's one thing. Then um, if there's a, a driver behaviour issue, obviously police enforcement um, can work well and education can work well. So it's really a matter for that road safety action plan group for the area to get <coughs> together and say, we've got a problem in this particular area. What's causing the problem? Is it a, a roading factor or a roadside factor that needs um, addressing or is it a driver behaviour factor? Um, and therefore choose the most appropriate solution. Thank you. Sorry, it was a bit long no, no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, Mike. Yes, I, I agree with that, Alan, about the report. Just wonderful to read it. I, I did have a few problems because there wasn't enough Māori headings there. <laughs> Um, just in terms, I've been reading about the, um, because I, I'm expecting an invitation to ride on the rail car in February, um, and it's been talked about the uh, Mohaka Viaduct, um, which for your interest, I've just been doing a few figures. I first, first went over there um, uh, in 1940, and um, the last time I was over there, uh, 57 years ago. So is, is the Mohaka Viaduct, beautiful as it is, is that going to be a real problem in terms of the wire or to, to Napier um, link? Not as far as we were aware. Um, the uh, Kiwi Rail are working on um, doing all the maintenance and necessary um, work on the line at the moment. Um, Councillor Dick Wilson and myself and I think Councillor Bailey as well all went across it in a, a uh, what are those things called, a high, high, rail. high rail vehicle high in June um, and we survived. So Still, <laughs> still here. No, the, 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 the viaduct is, is, in, sound. is, is sound. Um, 
and uh, the approach to maintenance is that it's generally spot maintenance. You know, I mean, if a little bit of rust starts occurring somewhere, they fix it. Uh, and we've got to remember that, uh, like the state hydro schemes, these were built in the days when engineers were engineers and yeah. didn't cut corners, and and uh, the, the the Napier Wairau line was the last uh, line commissioned in the country early in the uh, in the 1940s, um, 1943. The first uh, vehicle or rail car went on it. Uh, did you say you went on it in 1940? I just on the jigger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't even around in 1940, Mr. Mohi. Wait, you're 43. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Mohi, for that little bit of exaggeration there. Of your age. We know you're old, but we didn't know you're that old. Chair, with your indulgence, could I? Sorry. Fenton's so Fenton's next. Yeah. Sorry. I just had a question for the, through you, Chair, the Chief Executive, on the Primary Growth Fund. You know, it's only got a week to go. Is he going to spend it all? Related, but maybe not. Sorry, where's the week to go? Well, it's a week in the financial year left. Uh, our understanding... So as the funds come through for rail, etc., do you understand? So, as, as we understand, we've been advised by Crown officials last week that the Pro Provincial Growth Fund actually goes live on the 1st of July. Ah. So, while there have been pre-commitments made right. uh, and various well, checks written check. from various various funds, it doesn't actually open for business till the 1st of July. It's a great explanation. Thank you. <laughs> OK, Alan, will you move... Sorry, oh, you've got a question. I've got some questions. Think yeah, and you have, too. Sorry. Well, where you go, James? Or... Uh, look, I was just... Just hoping that either um, Anne or Alan could explain uh, the safety upgrades for Pakipaki to Waipukuro and Wairua to Napier. Uh, they, the main policy objectives for both of those are the same, which is safety. Uh, on uh, page 35 of the agenda paper, there's $18 million total project costs for Pakipaki to Waipukuro, and there's not, a little over $9 million for State Highway to Wairua to Napier. I note in the document that it refers to the, the deaths over the last 10 years, Pakipaki to Waipukura is 13, and Bayview to Wairua is 21. So it seems we're spending twice as much money on upgrading a road which is uh, significantly less, has caused significantly fewer deaths. Um, is there an explanation for that? Um, there are, there's another project which is actually underway at present, and will likely continue into the new financial year, but we haven't been able to show it here because we're duty-bound to show exactly what the Transport Agency has submitted. Uh, and that is a Safe Roads Alliance project um, which is working on roads and roadsides at present, so it's dangerous corners, um, seal widening, those sorts of um, low-hanging fruit for, for road safety, and that's a further six or seven million um, so started this spending has started and that will continue into the next financial year. Um, these last two projects which are shown here were added in um, in, the, in the last couple of months and they are, as you'll see, the spend is some years out or in the third year of the plan. Um, the Paki Paki to Waipukura one is um, scheduled first this and the other one further out. We really don't have a lot of detail about those at the moment, and it's fair to say we were surprised, but, but pleased to see any um, safety spend being um, injected by NZTA. So that all I'm saying there is the detail hasn't yet been worked out, and it could possibly be as simple as that some of the treatments required um, to solve a particular safety problem are more expensive um, in a certain area. I don't know that it necessarily translates cost to deaths, if you see what I mean. Okay. Um, but we, we don't know at this point exactly even what that project is going to um, to consist of in detail. Okay. Uh, the whole thing's a bit of a work in progress at the moment, to be honest. Paul. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, page 16 of, of the uh, recommendations. Um, 5.2.1, safety travel time and level of service on State Highway 2 north of Napier. I find it kind of ironic that um, you've given the distance between Bayview and Wairarul is 106 kilometres and that the Wairarul District Council wants to see the journey time reduced to one hour 
to my to my maths that makes an average average speed on that stretch of road is 106 k's, which is kind of mm. not particularly helpful for safety. Mm. Well, <laughs> I think approximately, um, and that certain, certainly we're just reflecting um, a wish that Wairau District Council have had to have that um, uh, travel time decreased. Well, if it's 106 k's. Yeah. You cannot reduce it down no, no, to an, an hour's travel time without breaking the law. Yeah, so, no, no, that's fair comment. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that... They have a few pro issues about counting. Yeah, <laughs> kind of ironic. <laughs> but um, it's about changing the route, as I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so, so I, I'm sure that'll be part of it, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Um, the other, to, to a couple of other questions. Um, I noted in there you talked about changing or reviewing the bus routes. Um, at some at some point, yes. Did, would that include uh, perhaps getting a bus out to the airport? Because we haven't got that at the moment. I think mm -hmm. we'd have to be the only region that doesn't have a public bus service out to their airport. Yeah. Uh, we, through uh, you, Mr. Chair, um, we also have a regional public transport plan, which we're reviewing at present. It has to be done at the same time as or soon after the regional land transport plan. And that provides the detail. I mean, this is a more high-level document in terms of um, public transport, and the detail is in the public transport plan. That's certainly one of the things that we are looking at, um, and we have had quite a number of requests, and we've done some early consultation um, with user groups and councils and so on, and that's something that has cropped up. OK, because it's okay. something I think needs to be... It seemed a bit um, odd to me that we don't have a service out to the bus, uh, out to the airport. Um, the other one is you've mentioned a number of times during the um, during the uh, regional land transport plan about how you want to improve access to the port. You're doing, you know, Park mm -hmm. Road exit intersection and um, what's happening at Fokker 2 and so on. Uh, you also mentioned the, the challenges that we, we're going to have in, around Ahariri. Um, yet there's, I don't see anything in the plan that actually says you're intending to um, do any studies or even start that process. So I'm, I'm yeah. surprised that that's been not there. Uh, there, there, has a, there has been a study conducted um, and finished a, around 18 months to two years ago, which um, had some phased improvements in it. And some of those um, we're already seeing now on the ground. Um, the Ahuriri section, that particular section, at that time was deemed to be some years out. Um, now that is something that's possibly going to be revisited um, in, the, in the shorter term because growth may actually have exceeded the predictions of that study. That was a study called the Napier Port Access Study done by the New Zealand Transport Agency. Yeah, well that's, that, that's why I find it yeah. surprising mm. that it's not in, the, it's not, not in here in, in a, any schedule of Things it, to be done. It's so discussed. It's discussed, but the actual that actual project, the Ahuriri section, <coughs> is not in the program for the next three years. For the next three years. The next three years, because of the timing um, that was determined by that study. So, Councillor, um, we are in discussions with Napier City Council and the Port of Napier around expediting this through funding from the Provincial Growth Fund. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and so that is that's uh, something which I discussed with Anne yesterday. Uh, and uh, we're proposing to take a, a, a leadership role in terms of, of bringing together a proposition for funding which sits over and above the plan here. And, and I think that rec that's in recognition of the fact that um, uh, the increase, particularly in log volumes, uh, have exceeded expectations yep. Uh, yep. for the port. And so what was thought to be some years out is moving closer to us, and that relates to the conversation we had earlier today about the, the port's efficiency overall. The, the other thing is that, um, you know, there are fairly big question marks as to <coughs> what impact the, uh, the Wakatu arterial and its associated works and even the, even the works around the airport, what they are going to do to um, traffic volumes. Um, and really, we just won't know until um, those works are completed and, and bedded in. So it's probably, it's probably, in a year's time, we're going to have to look very hard at emerging traffic patterns. But I, I agree with James uh, that... Um, the issue, I, we were talking about congestion on port um, earlier on today, but there's also port congestion off port, um, and we have to do something. And I assume, James, that uh, if you are going to be putting forward a proposal like that, you'll, um, 
you'll keep the transport committee in the in the in the loop. So the intention is it would be uh, something that would be endorsed uh, by the regional transport committee. The regional transport committee effectively would make the representation to the provincial growth fund, That's right. uh, and obviously Kiwi Rail are a key partner in that as well. Yeah. Alan, would you like to move? Yes, I'll move, um, Mr. Chairman. So we're moving. We're approving. Um, the, the plan, we are approving that it goes to the uh, Transport Agency and uh, we're also uh, moving to receive the reports in item four. Do we have a seconder? Anything a seconder? Do you wish to speak, Alan? I think, I've, I think uh, everything's been said, Mr Chairman. Paul, do you wish to speak? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for the, um, the, the, the uh, proposed regional land transport plan. I think it's... Um, Whilst I understand the explanations around the issues I've raised around Ahuri and, and the, um, the bus to the airport, I'm, I'm disappointed that that wasn't entirely clear in the, in, in, in the plan, around, especially around the Ahuri part of it, because that's, a, that's an issue <coughs> which is becoming significant for the people of Napier so, um, and, and that live in the area. So, um, yeah, some further explanation would have been welcome, but I'll accept it as it is. Any further you to speak, Finn? No disappointment in the plan, Chair. I'd just like to thank um, Ms Regrave uh, and, um, and her team for doing a, a great body of work. Yeah, I would like to add to that too. Um, we're all caught in these traffic jams at the moment, but we can see the vision, mm. um, and there's no doubt about it. Um, um, I'm just following on Alan's point that um, I think it's going to be hu hugely successful, the... Um, traffic from Havelock North um, to the airport or, or north um, and um, all the work that's been done around that and um, continuing on that, it just I just think the flow of traffic is going to be uh, fantastic following all the work that's been done. So well done if you've contributed to that and you clearly have. So grateful from the people of Hawke's Bay. Uh, Alan, would you want to sum up? Um, no, but I would like to thank um, Liz Lambert for her oversight and management of, of this group over the last, well, many, many years. Um, and uh, as she moves on to other important responsibilities. Thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? It's carried. Thank you very much. We will move on to item... Thank you, Anne. Item nine, remuneration of Tanata Whenua. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, yes, Liz is on. Good morning, just, I think. Thank you. Uh, members of Council, <coughs> you'll recall that late last year we uh, undertook a remuneration review for Tangata Whenua members of both the Regional Planning Committee and the Māori Committee, and that was undertaken by David Shannon. The, uh, he, he did look at the two separately and we have already presented to you the Regional Planning Committee remuneration findings and you've already resolved those. So really just to tidy up the whole process up before we start a new <coughs> financial year, the purpose of this paper is just to get your approval to implement the recommendations made by Mr Shannon in his um, review for the Māori Committee members. Um, at present they are paid $276 per meeting day and obviously there's um, travel and um, other reimbursements <coughs> as required are also made. Mr Shannon recommended a meeting fee of $400 a day um, and the members of the Māori Committee uh, supported that. Um, we have certainly made provision in the budget for the, the revised remuneration figures for both the Regional Planning Committee and the Māori Committee, so um, so there's uh, money in the budget for that. But the recommendation is to um, adopt or implement the payment system put forward by Mr Shannon uh, with effect from the 1st of July. So, uh, <coughs> Mr Chairman, can I redeem myself by moving this recommendation? <laughs> Goes a fair way. <laughs> I'll second it, Chair. Okay. Are there any discussion? Yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I was pretty disappointed in this um, David Shannon's um, uh, appreciation of how the various Taifenua worked. He had no idea. He did no background, and I spoke to two of the council managers. They came away with the same opinion. 
Um, uh, but just to say that the Tai Whenua uh, members, three from each of the four Tai Whenua, um, we go back and report to uh, our monthly meetings. Um, we don't get paid for those monthly meetings. Um, the Tamatea Tai Whenua exists on a grant from Nikki, fishing money, of $30,000 a year. That pays two temporary staff for the office accommodation and the PCs, etc. So um, in welcoming this uh, to my committee members, uh, also the, um, I will be saying to them that the $124 a day increase, that uh, instead of having separate workshops, I will be recommending that we have workshops tagged on to the meetings which usually finish between 1 and 1.30. So uh, thank, <coughs> thank you very much for endorsing that. Uh, um, and I just, a bit of a pity that it wasn't in sort of to the old thing that you could have made uh, a real <laughs> effort. <laughs> Are there any other speakers? Uh, Alan, do you want to sum up and redeem yourself even further? You could sum up in Torero, that's what. Tihei Māori Ora. Tihei Māori <laughs> Thank you, Alan. You're well and truly redeemed. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you very much. Fixing the uh, common seal. Item 10. Do we have a mover? Fenton? Seconder? Alan? Oh, yeah, sure. Alan will second. Do we have any discussion on fixing the common seal? Sales are progressing. All those in favour? Aye. 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 All against? Aye. It is carried. Thank you very much. They are all decision items. So um, item 11 is uh, recommendations from the Māori Committee. Mr Mohi. you want to speak to those recommendations? Yes, tēnā koutou koutou. Uh, tēnā reporta mo te komiti i noho ana i te wairo. Mohi ana koutou? No, no, I'll speak in English. Um, it was a very good meeting, um, uh, and a lot of locals came to uh, the meeting, which uh, uh, was a huge advantage in terms of them being able to, um, uh, what was the word I used, uh, vent some of their uh, frustrations about the council. Um, a lot of them were ill-conceived, uh, not quite right. But um, the advantage about the, the two times a year when we go out to um, the regions, um, it's an opportunity for the locals. The disadvantage I see is, and especially with the wire or meeting, that it doesn't give the Maori committee members enough time to, uh, to be involved in the meeting. And also, um, at the meetings, they're inclined to be um, one or two speakers that um, take over the meeting. And the other disadvantage um, at the Wairau meeting was that um, uh, Joyce Ann had organised two locals to do presentations which were far too long. They just took uh, too much of the meeting, even though they were excellent um, presentations. Um, so from the locals, the, um, there was huge concern about the eel, the lack of eel population, and there were some very good papers um, spoken about um, um, from Ian Maxwell and also from the chair um, spoke about um, having a rahui on rahui, meaning um, a halt, a temporary halt on the um, commercial eeling. Um, also. Um, there was an appreciation from um, the uh, committee members, and they, uh, my committee members spoke to me about how they appreciated that all of the managers and the CEO started their presentations with a uh, mihi. That was noticed and appreciated. Um, what f um, flowed on from the meeting at the lunch was several um, um, opportunities for the locals to talk to managers, and some of them are coming here, arranging have appointments to further the um, information um, sharing and uh, for things that are happening in the Wairau district. Um, also, the night before, um, uh, Chair and I uh, met with um, Richard um, Brooking from Whakakee, uh, and um, that um, sort of set the 
and Leon, and Leon Symes, uh, and that set the the, um, the scene, as it were, for this weekend's meeting at Whakake to discuss the uh, freshwater, what's it called, freshwater uh, uh, allocation of two, two odd million dollars. So um, I, I will be attending that meeting. So, Mr. Chair, that was about it. Would you like to comment? Uh, yeah, no, I do want to comment. Um, I thought it was a very good meeting. Um, I just, um, I think we need to have and hear the recommendation. We, we actually moved a resolution uh, from the meeting on um, having a moratorium on commercial fishing for eels. Um, and uh, that should be reflected in that. And I do recall getting an email from uh, Michelle, a Michelle, member of the Māori committee, um, saying it wasn't in here and why wasn't it in here. So and can we please... Um, get it in here because it was a formal resolution moved at the Murray Committee as a recommendation. Recommendation on what? To have a moratorium on commercial Rahui. eeling. Arahui. Mm. On commercial eeling in Hawke's Bay. So that needs to be... Um, <coughs> so, uh, Chair, I can, I can confirm uh, uh, that there are in the minutes uh, several resolutions um, to introduce oh, okay. to Rahui on, okay. on commercial uh, fishing in an effort to close down the industry pending investigation. So uh, that is in the minutes. It just ha um, hasn't come through in the report here uh, to Council. Yeah, um, that um, there was a draft sent out, and, and that's what that's she right, complained draft. about. Sorry, I got that a little bit wrong. Just to update the Council on that, um, there you have a quota for um, commercial. Um, Ealing, and uh, our quota is held by uh, Kahanunu Incorporated, and they have um, uh, put a moratorium themselves on their own quota. So what we have is we have no commercial Ealing done by our own people. We have a lot of what I refer to as raiders coming in from the north and the south, fishing out our rivers. It's causing huge disquiet amongst uh, not only Tanner for Whenua, but the old people in Havelock North who have been feeding <coughs> the rules. And um, I've been checking, and they're gone. So um, I'm particularly mad about this. Um, we don't, uh, you know, these eels, they, la they live for um, a long period of time, 80 years, and then they eventually go back to Tonga, or there's some dispute about that. Some They go back to the Fijian basin um, to breed. Um, and if we're not careful, we won't have any eels in 50 years in our waters. So I'm very strongly advocating, and I've spoken to the Minister of Fisheries about that, and he said if you can get um, Tanner de Fennel behind you, he will action <coughs> for a time on commercial eeling in Hawke's Bay. So I'm looking forward to your support going forward on that. And the, we, it began at the Maori Committee. Okay. So in terms, of a, in terms of a motion, Chair, do we have to... Should we put something up to we're just to, No, we're just going to accept this... Um, the, um, this report. There are minutes to their meeting. Um, well, can, can we make a recommendation that a reports to the Environment and Services Committee with a way forward on that? Or I don't know. Can we? Um, yeah, what's the process you intend? I mean, intend using to? Because I, I totally get what you're trying to do, and, I, and obviously it'd have to be. We would need to make a recommendation to the Ministry of Fisheries that he puts a ban on or Rohi on mm. Ealing and, and Hawke's Bay. But in terms of a process, we would uh, have to have some sort of formal motion on the books to do that. Oh, look, look, we don't, but I think it's um, it would be good. It would be good if we, we did so, so that we could be assured of the um, of the council's um, overall support and behind the chairman's initiative on this. Uh, and there's a choice about. I think we've got a, a view from the Māori Standing Committee. Uh, there's a question about whether it's something we want to take to the Regional Planning Committee or deal directly with the treaty settlement groups out of um, out of that forum. I think this is uh, the latter. Uh, and so, uh, look, we, we'll, we'll have something drafted. Um, the chairman's asked for something to be drafted, and we'll find a suitable location to bring it forward. It may be the council meeting at the end of the month, just given the, the timing issues. Um, we've got a fairly full agenda for environment services next week. No, that's fine. Can I just ask you a question with regard to jurisdiction, um, James? Um, is, is there a consent or an RMA issue involved, or is it simply a Ministry of Fisheries issue? 
It's Minister, Ministry of Fisheries, so there's a carve out for fisheries uh, under the RMA, uh, and uh, and so we don't have jurisdiction uh, in terms of managing the take uh, of, of eels, which is why it does need to be a decision uh, of the Minister of Fisheries, but there's also a role for the Minister of Conservation as well, and she has announced a review of freshwater fisheries regulation uh, just in the last month. Uh, and we'll be consulting on that, including the ability to impose moratoria on, on these sorts of issues. So the government is looking at it. So, so just to follow that one step further, uh, Mr Chair, uh, in terms of the advocacy you're, you're um, anticipating, uh, should that paper come through the Environment Committee uh, and then back to Council? Uh, I think that's or is it relevant right. in the uh, RMA to go to RPC? Uh, well, it's not a regional planning committee issue. Um, it is a um, it is more of an environment services committee one. Um, but but look, given that we've got a meeting next week with a full agenda, um, uh, we we may be able to add it as a as a as a late item if it's not going to take up too much time of the, the agenda. I'm kidding. Some head shake. It's a very very big agenda for ENS next week. Um, I think um, we possibly might be just easier if we take it straight to council at the end of the month. I don't think it what needs double debate particularly. No. So the recommendation is we advocate to the Minister of Fisheries yeah. from for a Rahui on with the support of our Tanata Whenua groups. <coughs> yep. Which were pretty universally uh, universally supporting us. It's a process question, Chair. So now that this is a council decision, mm -hmm. we don't need to do any more, do we? Unless you want to cite the the, uh, the letter, I mean, look, you could. I mean, if you look, if you want to vote today, you can uh, you can authorise the or um, uh, press that uh, right or to that Mr. that a a a letter be drafted uh, for the signature of the chair on behalf of the council to the minister of fisheries. <coughs> <coughs> and then any follow-up from that can come through ENS potentially, Chair. Yeah. Ask, ask your advice on that. Is it commercial fishing of eels? Yes. Yeah, I think it's commercial fishing for eels. But I'd support that otherwise. <laughs> yeah. So you need to... Number two there is taken from the minutes, and I don't think that was captured accurate. I, I think it wasn't the word Rahui, it was actually that a Rahui yeah. be introduced. Um, yeah, that's right. Well, if Council's happy, I'll be delighted if we, we could approve this now. I hope it's commercial fishing of eels. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, so order. just add that in number two, too. As two well. Number two as well. Don't know. You've got to be careful with that. Looks bad. <laughs> fishing, uh, commercial fishing of eels, that, number two. The uh, Dararahi of commercial fishing of eels. In Hawke's Bay. Yeah. Is closed down the right word? Because is this permanent? Um, or, no. Um, Place a moratorium. Yeah. No, don't put temporary though. Put a moratorium. Temporary, no, temporary sounds like a week. To an effort, uh, introduce else to moratorium. Yeah, and just moratorium. Yeah. Because that could last. Place a moratorium. Mm. Place a moratorium. No. Oh, okay. No. That's no. the in an effort to close down. The moratorium it's goes down where your cursor was before. Yeah. Yeah, between committees, right? Mm. Resolutions mm. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're substituting, no, close down. I don't think pending investigation even do it. What about reduce? That's right. Moratorium. Reduce. Not to reduce, Mike. I want them out, mate. I want them out. I want them out. This is a decision for um, our iwi to make. 
when they come back in. But you know, the um, investigations part of the discussion was in relation to further science that would confirm that it, that it could be sustainably taken. What was the nature of the conversation? It's not my conversation, but it's theirs, yeah. yeah. Was it possible to send just that paragraph to me? Okay. Um, are we right on the language? Are we comfortable with the language? It's, it's good enough for us to go away and craft something up appropriate. Okay. Do we have a mover? I'll move it. And I'll second it. I, just, I don't need to speak any further. Do you... I am ecstatic that we were able to listen to what our Tangana Whenua have been telling the Tangana Whenua have been telling us and actually take action on it. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Um, it's really interesting. I have had a lot of discussions with uh, Māori throughout the region on this, um, their universal um, adherence of what's happening. And um, only this weekend I talked to uh, someone who's known to all of you, and um, they are taking action now. Um, so uh, this is uh, activity which is despised in our region. You don't have to use language harder. It is despised. So um, everything we can do to stop this um, has to be done. So I really thank for your support. So it's now Pui buggers coming down. North and south, I said. Does <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else wish to speak? All those in favour? All right. Aye. Aye. Against, it's carried, thank you very much. So, um, we accept the Maori committee. Oh, well, we, need, we need to do that, don't we, actually? Because that, uh, we need a resolution. That was everything, wasn't it? Was that everything? Yeah. We can just, we okay. just add those. Okay, we'll just add those to it then. Thank you very much, Mike. It was a good meeting in Wairau. Report from the Regional Planning Committee. I suppose I should do that. Um, there was no Regional Planning Committee because we didn't have a quorum. So, um, we had a, a discussion on a raft of issues, but um, there were no decision items, so um, essentially I don't think there's any uh, <coughs> any report. Chair, why don't we just leave that, you move it stays on the table on the basis, yeah. we didn't discuss any of this stuff here that's written here. <coughs> no, we didn't. Um, I think we just leave that report sitting on the table. Thank well, you. Those items <coughs> are all going to the next uh, meeting of the committee. Right. I'll second that, Chair, if that helps. Yes, we have a mover. Um, you move, I, I moved, you second. Uh, I moved, you second. Um, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Right. Thank you. So, item uh, 13 activities, significant projects. Questions? Benton. The, the, um, one of the most significant producer of activities in the region as the chairman. You don't do a report anymore, chairman. Can you explain that? No, I can't explain that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it takes a lot of time, and I guess, um, um, but I can do, I can reactivate that if you like. Um, I'm I, I, I understand how challenging it is, having done it myself. And it's not I challenging, and, it just takes a lot of time. I used to try and yeah. slip it through um, un, unnoticed as well, Chair. Um, <laughs> um, it, it actually was a good even, thing to do. Even by, you know, even yeah. two monthly would be good. Um, I'll commence, I'll do a report for next meeting. Thank you. Just get tired to knock something up out of your diary. Oh, that's, that's a good tactic. So, so we have probably um, stopped prompting you to um, yeah. draft one, which is uh, possibly the issue, so look, we'll follow that up. Which was wonderful when you stopped prompting. Um, Just some further Paul. Some questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, number, we're, on, we're on item 13, aren't we? The, um, yep. Uh, item number 31, the carbon forestry, um, peel down carbon forestry. Do we, get, uh, do we get an invite to that? Do you know, James? Uh, look, I don't know off the top of my head, but I can't see any reason why not. Um, so uh, we'll follow that up with the land management before. staff. Won't we? No. I can't remember there was one that we were here from when we went. Uh, we no. the conference. Oh, OK, right. So that's no good. LG, no. LGNZ. Yep. Would, would anyone else like to attend? Hmm. And, and the other one was um, under resource consent, uh, which is like 54 to 60. Um, 
Are we intending to keep a track on how many applications or applications we've been receiving from the forestry industry um, because of the, the obviously the, rate, the the rising awareness of the slash issue mm. um, to, to so uh, so that we get a feel that it's actually been done like it should be or. Uh, we are uh, providing uh, them to you on the Monday emails in terms of consents coming in, and you will have seen that there's been a, a few yeah. coming through. I mean, we, we, we focus here on the significant ones, and most of those are, uh, are not really considered significant because they are, they're, a, they're a existing activity largely um, for which there is a consent process uh, being followed. Uh, look, I had a conversation with... Um, uh, with Mrs Lambert yesterday about the management of forest slash uh, and the extent to which we're satisfied that the consent conditions we're putting in the um, in the harvest plans which are coming through uh, are managing that issue and uh, she is going to be doing some work with um, with our compliance and with our consent staff to to essentially assure ourselves that we're doing everything we possibly can to manage that, that issue um, and um, we can provide you with uh, a view on that. Uh, I did say to her yesterday I anticipated that the council would be seeking a briefing on uh, on these matters and what we're doing about them in the not too distant future. So um, we can bring that forward possibly the next DNS committee meeting if that's yeah, no, uh, helpful. Fine, be <coughs> so perhaps an action on that. Just to follow up yeah. on that, the um, will that include? It'd be useful to know the value of the um, the slash for pan pack firing its kilns at the moment because. Ironically, it was an economic driver that tidied a lot of this up within 100 kilometres um, previously, and if, if that's still of high value, even though it's, it's, it's at the whim of the purchaser, it was a method of uh, ensuring that all uh, woody produce was removed from site because they, there was a value of 21 or 22 ton, uh, dollars a tonne on it, which made it economic to harvest it and take it back down to the plant. You're quite right, Councillor, and we have had discussions with PAMPAC in the last couple of weeks on this. Uh, they have confirmed that they still have a high level of demand for um, forest slash. They are recovering um, non merchantable timber for their boilers uh, themselves presently. Uh, it all goes to the cost of transport, and the comment they made to us is they would love to get their hands on all that timber in Tolaga Bay. Uh, it's just simply a cost of removal, and I understand that part of the Gisborne District, Gisborne District Council's discussion with central government is whether some public subsidy needs to be brought to bear to uh, pull some of this uh, material out of forests uh, and, uh, and send it to, uh, to Panpac or other co-gen uh, operations. So another question, Chair. Um, Number 50, where are we? 53, ongoing work with Yellow Bristlegrass Awareness Program in Wydaw. Just a question, don't need the answer now, someone might be able to email me or us or whatever at a later stage, but this time of the year a lot of cattle are moved up and down our roads and we do, my understanding is we're not part of a <coughs> roving consent, it's a district council, so is it possible to coordinate with our WDC cousins up the road about when stock is being moved and whether we can have some input into whether they were transporting stock on a part of the road that has the yellow br bristle grass because it really is taking off up there. Councillor, I'll get somebody from the biosecurity team to uh, get in touch and discuss that with you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I have, um, oh, we've covered all the uh, water conservation one, but um, Item 57, the Landcorp Aharu Stormwater Discharge. Um, I've mentioned to you a couple of times, James, I want to get a much better understanding of this Napier Stormwater order Discharge. And um, I know that they have a um, proposal or a um, st strategy to go forward. Um, I think Council would be really interested in what that is. Um, so if we could have a um, session with them, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, yes, Chair, that is planned. I think, unfortunately, there was a, a briefing, a presentation come uh, given to Council uh, while you were uh, in Auckland late last year, so you didn't get the benefit of that. Uh, but I think there has been a bit of water under the bridge um, with LTPs and with also the tank plan change. Uh, and this is obviously now a focus for the Ahariri Committee as well. Um, so it will be time to have an update from Napier City, I think, um, yeah, uh, when we can next organise it. Uh, uh, Debbie, sorry. The um, 
number 64, the Shallow Lakes High Level Assessment. I'm just wondering, is that something that needs to be circulated amongst councillors, or obviously the interest in Lake uh, Fatuma is top of mind for me? Uh, so that's a science report I would expect to come through to the Environment Services Committee uh, meeting, uh, not obviously next week, but uh, probably the next one. Yep. Any more questions? Otherwise, we'll move. And anyone no, move Mr. to Mr. Chairman? Just, just to comment um, uh, under Tank 13, page 62, one round of Karamu fecal source tracking has been undertaken, which yielded primarily avian sources. Now, um, I mean, everyone gets down on cows and sheep and and their um, um, body functional habits. Um, but in fact, you know, bird life and waterfowl can be major contributors to, um, you know, fecal contamination of, of waterways. And we like birds. Um, so what do we do about it? No, um, well, no. We are, I think council is very aware that um, birds, especially foreign species, are a huge um, contributor. Uh, to pollution of our rivers, and I, sh I absolutely suggest that we get Mr. Mohi onto it. He's a crack shot, as I've witnessed previously um, on these issues. Can you give me an Is open license here. <laughs> <laughs> we, they are a big issue, and um, uh, Ocean Beach, they're still there, aren't they? They've got got, you're a legend out there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they're an issue. Let's leave it at that. Okay, do we have a mover? How do move, Mr. Chair? We accept, thank you. Penton, second. All those in favour? Aye. Right. We won't speak to those. Thank you very much. Um, late items. I, I just, uh, items not on the agenda, so if everyone could just report. We won't have a discussion on all these, we'll just report on them. We have four, starting with you, Councillor Bailey. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just to advise councillors, I attended a um, Tipu Pukinga Atafai at the Kanunu Marae up in New Hacker um, last week, put on by Doc. Um, it was much appreciated. Um, went through uh, protocol for um, life around the Marae, uh, bit about treaty, uh, tea treaty, and then also something about um, Māori structures, which are absolutely fascinating. Um, a thoroughly enjoyable forward Ended up, it was four days, but it's really only like three days of actually sitting down and doing stuff. Um, and I'd, I'll do a report to yourself and, and James um, in terms of whether, whether it was of any value, it could be of any value to, to have that sort of thing happening at the regional council, um, given, the, given the way that we're trying to uh, improve our relation, ongoing relationship with Tangata Whenua. I found it, found it really useful. You sent me a copy too. Yep, yeah, absolutely right. No, no, I've been involved in those booking of courses. They actually came out of uh, originally with Donna Awatere um, in the early 1990s when she um, went around doing the Ihi courses and then Doc picked them up and they're called Te Pukinga, which is a, um, as um, uh, Paul said, it's a sort of a procedural um, for uh, poor fitty, for funerals, the whole works. It's just they're always extremely enjoyed by um, greater s staff and members working in the environment. Thank you, Mike. Your second item? My second item. Um, I noticed, I've been noticing in the um, applications received reports there's a number of um, applications for water takes from, it seems like, the Heratonga, Heratonga area. Um, just wondering if we could have an update at some stage. Um, as to how many of those would be for consents that were applied for before we put our moratorium on any further water takes, um, or whether they're in, a, in another area entirely, because I heard, heard some stories around um, if it's in the two type curry catchment that we look at that that, that, our, that particular moratorium isn't is an effect in there. You know, I understood, from my understanding, everything was all unconnected, so... So you're asking for a yep. James to get back to you on that? Okay. Yeah. You, you got a third item? No. Oh, I thought you had three. Oh, did I have three? No, no that's right. Fenton's in. Fenton, Wild or River. So just quickly, Chair. Wild River. Oh, you were desperately here. I went this. to uh, the Wairau District Council <laughs> public meeting the other night, and um, 
Apart from one of my compatriots, uh, ratepayers, threatening the life of one of the councillors, which makes meeting, our meetings look <laughs> rather tame, uh, I just want to make sure it goes on the record. There was a challenge to me, and there always is by the WDC, if you turn up to a public meeting, on our um, work program to shore up the playground and potentially the Ferry Hotel. I did explain to the meeting that, uh, you know, our forefathers chose to build a town on a silt river and, and from time to time it's going to come and visit us in the town no matter what we do. But I just want to put on the record that Steve Cave has done a fantastic job, um, both with Graham Hanson and since Graham's left, uh, designing and we, my understanding, we're close to implementing a protection wall against around the wider playground. So I just want to have that on the record here. Thank you. Um, it's me. Hotbox, Debbie. Um, so tomorrow, 11:30 in Takapau, there is the um, one of the hotspot openings, and I know you've all received an invitation to it. But just to flag, um, it would be nice to see some some councillors there. For some reason, it's attracted the attention of the district council and um, the mayor's decided to bring all of the district councillors. So I think it's important that we take the, the kudos for, you know, this is a regional council initiative and I don't, I think it's unfortunate if there's any confusion in the public. So any support from, um, from you guys would be welcome. <laughs> 11.30 tomorrow. Yeah, um, it, um, I'd endorse that. If you can get along there, that would be really good. Unfortunately, I will be, um, not unfortunately, I'm looking forward to going to the visit the union. Um, but I can't be in two places at once, so I won't be there. So thank you, councillors. Um, that was the end of our meeting. Thank you very much for turning up. Um, we might ask, um, again, tradition, Mr Moore, to close our meeting and bless our lunch. Certainly. I hope I'm doing my talk here. I'm not here to go to it. I'm fucking meaning I'm not here to go to it. 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 I mean, he will call Huri Matoki, a queer monarchy, and a guide of Matotina. Okay, okay, I mean. Thank you. <coughs>